We're reading the thing about Oliver and we're up to chapter 14. We tried everything to calm Oliver down. The spinner, pieces of paper, filling the bathroom sink with water, playing Oliver's favourite song on the tablet. So far, nothing has worked. It's Saturday and Oliver wants the rubbish truck. Aunt Janine told me that in Townsville, the rubbish truck comes on Mondays, but Oliver's interval alarm clock doesn't know that. No matter how hard we try, we will never make him understand that. Oliver is screaming so hard that he's actually turning blue. I wrap my arms around him tightly. I hum in his ear just like mum does. I even carry him into my room to show him the stained glass window he loved so much. Finally, he falls asleep from exhaustion. I take him to the study and lay down, him down gently on the mattress. I don't even know if he's broken any records for screaming this time. I lost track. But I do know one thing. He's broken a lot of Aunt Janine stuff. And he's almost broken Aunt Janine. Very quietly, I pull the door shut. Then I head back to the kitchen. Aunt Janine looks like she's been to war. Together, we sweep up the glass from the kitchen floor. I put antiseptic on Aunt Janine's arm where Oliver's teeth have broken the skin. We've both missed lunch. What was cooking on the stove is now in the bin, but it's getting closer to dinner time now. So Aunt Janine boils a kettle and opens a pack of biscuits. Just as she's pouring the tea, I hear footsteps and a jangle of keys. A woman strides in the kitchen. I do a double take. Mum! She looks different, really different. Her hair is cut short like a boy's. All the grey is gone and now it's a reddish brown colour and the smell is like a hair salon. Aunt Janine almost drops the teapot. Wow, you look stunning, Dana. I stare at her in disbelief. Mum's face is glowing. She puts away her takeaway coffee on the kitchen table and does us well. Well, what do you think? Mum is waiting for me to say something, but the ball of anger in my throat is so big I can't speak. Mum's smile vanishes. Don't you like it, Tilly? Like it, Mum. It looks complete. You look like a completely different person. How could you do this? I blurted it out. Aunt Janine comes towards me. Now, Tilly, I duck around her. Hasn't poor Ollie been through enough? I suppose you just expect him to adjust to this too. Mum closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. I needed to change, Tilly. I'm trying to make a fresh start. Because moving here wasn't enough of a change? I snap sarcastically. Mum doesn't say anything. <coughs> Oliver is going to lose his mind. Even if we dyed Mum's hair back to normal colour, even if we had added streaks of grey, you can't uncut hair. I will never, it will never go back to the way it was. I swallow my anger. Did you get the lock for my door? Mum's face falls. I knew she would forget. I'm sorry, Tilly. Mum rubs the side of her head. I'll go back tomorrow. But you promised. Tilly, I've had a lot of other stuff in my mind. Stuff that's more important than a lock for a door. More important than me, you mean? Tilly, Aunt Janine interrupts. That's not fair. My blood is boiling. I feel like screaming, but I don't want to wake up, Oliver. Mum looks at me hesitantly. I did drive past the pool, though. It's right on the waterfront. My heart lifts. Did you find out about swimming lessons? There's a long pause. Its clothes were repaired, she said finally. My heart drops like a stone. Well, that's just perfect. I turn my head and storm down the hall towards my room. I slam the door and flop onto my bed. Tears sting my eyes. Before I can stop them, they are rolling down my cheeks. I wish I was back at home. At least I'd had my fish tank and my friends and a lock on my bedroom door. Here, I've got nothing at all. I wipe my tears away angrily. Something is digging into my back. I roll to one side and pull out my aqua journal. Aunt Janine must have put it there to keep it safe, but it's not safe. I swing off the bed and push my aqua journal far underneath it. Then I notice the mug I painted for Mum is sitting on the bedside table. I don't put it under the bed. I don't even care if Oliver breaks it. Right now, I could smash it into a million bits. I hear a soft knocking. My door opens. I roll over so that my back is facing the door. The stained glass window is making patterns on the bed. If I were a mantis shrimp, I would punch a hole right through it. Mum sighs. Tilly, can I talk to you? Go away. I wait for Mum to sit down on the edge of the bed, but she doesn't. The door shuts quietly, and I hear her padding back up the hall. When Aunt Janine pops her head in to tell me it's time for dinner, I squeeze my eyes shut and pretend to be asleep.
and that's the end of chapter 14.